signs of trailer there to allow us to start the engines on mass and beats. We know they've started and also they're starting to warm up. But what? We get the water. So the crew will now release the springs, which hold the boat into the um, into the trailer and away they go. And the helm or the radio operator will be calling up Hollyhead Coast Guard and informing them that we launch the next site uh, and they'll be passing through this. So they will now go out to uh, await the arrival of the um, of the helicopter. So just whilst that's happening, back as far as 1730, rescue boats were based in Liverpool. And in 1785 in Bamber, which is up in the North East. Uh, and then seven, seven, um, 1789, wow. in fact, lifeboats were built in time and weir. There's a chap on the Isle of Man called Sir William Hillary. And he founded the National Institution for the Preservation of Life from Shipwreck. The They've got two winches, both on the uh, starboard side, the right hand side of the aircraft. And you can see the winchman now coming down on the road. So it's imperative now that the lifeboat gets it just right. As you'll see the lifeboat on the back of the A-frame for the mast, it's a pretty spiky antenna. The last thing you want to do is whack the winchman on the boat. So it's very neatly done. He's literally just popped the winchman into the, um, into the foredeck of the lifeboat. And as soon as the winchman gives the hand signal to cut away the line, um, or the line cut away, the winch on the beach of the line, and then the winch on the winch is back in. Halfway to the helicopter, this will depend on the condition of the casualty. If the casualty is conscious, then they're usually winched up with the winch operator uh, in a sling. It goes underneath the arms. Important to keep your arms down by your side, for obvious reasons. Uh, or if the casualty has suffered from, um, or is suffering from that. So this is what's called a dry lift. Because why do we do it right? The winchman stays, the winchman stays dry. You can see him wagging his legs, but it's not the comic effect. It's to uh, get it stable in the air, make sure he's positioned how he wants to be. Another um, type of winching that um, can happen is using a high line. So if you're trying to winch somebody... You might have a strong tide with no wind, and sometimes you'll have no tide and lots of wind, and sometimes you have lots of tide and lots of wind. Anyway, so it's a bit of an art to decide which one to uh, open. The decision at the end is the help and he'll run to the company of truck drivers. So they've got the starboard gate open because the wind is coming from the west. Uh, we're just after high water, so uh, the tide is not yet, uh, not yet uh, going to full strength. The wind will be the strongest element of the lifeboat to deal with while the will come up. So you can see the lifeboat's very movable and very stable, very stable at speed and very stable at the curve. As I've said before today, that's really important that we are able to um, practice these sort of manoeuvres. It's not about showing off, it's about building the confidence in the group, the capabilities of the lifeboat. Right by the shore crew, so not only do we have lifeboat crew, we have shore crew who get the, ready, the lifeboat ready to go to sea and then assist with its uh, washing down and recovery. So just as important with the lifeboat crew, a little bit less glamorous, but, uh, but just as important. As you'll appreciate, on a busy day when the beach is covered with, uh, with people enjoying the sun, you uh, need to make sure that it's all nice and safe and that people are clear. So Tim has driven the tractor into the sea, it's um, 
Water level's just come to the Olive Orange taps at the bottom of the, the water tanks on the back of the trailer. So that's um, spot on in terms of um, depth. The starboard gate is open and shortly the lifeboat will approach. Made a little bit easier for the, um, for the lifeboat. And as I said before today, it really is not easy getting the lifeboat onto the trailer. Um, it's a bit like kind of parallel park in a car park where one bit of the car park is going one way and one bit of the car park is going the other. Trailer. They have to be doing over 50 knots for it to fill. There's a cup at the back and a tube that runs all the way up to the bow that fills it. So the ballast will be full. The helm is now assessing the conditions around the trailer. It may just have a look, drive past, and then we'll come back around again or give it a go, take on level of confidence. So the whole idea is to bring the bow around and just doing check the progress of the boat by going to stern and then reverting it by and he's done a great job first time give him a round of applause usually what we do as the crew is we count the number of people watching and tell the helm just to put them off so clearly with all of you watching today it's a bit of a challenge for us i'm no seeing it lurk forward quite yet what happens um, and that's why you have a stir power once the props are out or just about to come out the water you'll kill the engines but they still leave the electrics on until they're up the beach because there's many a time we'll be recovering and the Coast Guard has called us to another rescue and in fact, to my memory, the most number of rescues we've had in one day is five uh, I think it was a bank holiday so fairly unusual, but um, yeah, you can, uh, you can end up spending pretty much the whole day at sea we do need to refuel, um, we can go for two and a half hours at full throttle um, so a lot of fuel on board, but, um, but you always want to have a reserve, especially if you're towing. If you're towing, you use an awful lot of fuel because there's an awful, awful lot of power in the engine going to make sure that the, uh, the tow is progressing smoothly. So they've now recovered, and, uh, and they'll wash the, uh, wash the tractor and the lifeboat down, and basically make sure that the lifeboat is ready for service again as quickly as possible. It is somewhat disheartening, but it has happened. You've just finished washing down. Call the Coast Guard, let the Coast Guard know that we're ready to go again. And return to what we were doing beforehand. So it could be your wife's birthday party, it could be your anniversary dinner, it could be 